Okay, Kerrigan is a spitfire. <laughs> she loves it when she comes here. She is walking down the halls. She likes to go into people's offices and tell them hello. And when you add those brown curls, those long lashes, and these adorable outfits with this feisty little spitfire going around, it's just the most adorable moment ever. All right, now I need one. Thank you. <laughs> She's just okay. checking your You can have this one back, motion. but I get this one. I know. I know you want them both, but I need one. Yeah? Can I have it? Not no, ready yet? I have the computer. He's listening. There we go. Thank you. So when she was about 10 months old, we noticed that she wasn't crawling or trying to bear weight in her legs. She wasn't saying and communicating very well. She was not saying as many words as what our other daughter had. Um, and she also was having issues with feeding. So Kerrigan has something called Rett syndrome. And so this is a genetic disorder that's rare, but pretty common amongst genetic disorders. And it affects every part of her. She started, um, as most do, with fairly young but fairly normal um, development, and then she started to stall. And then she had a handful of words that then eventually stopped. We had never heard of Rhett before, and our doctors at home were not familiar with it at all and we decided on St. Louis because they had a multidisciplinary clinic and we can come here and see multiple doctors of different expertise all in one day that are very specialized with Rett syndrome. And this is a new face. This is Miss Cassie. Hi. Kerrigan's team is huge. So she's really cared for by a number of different people, both at home and in St. Louis. And so she has a wonderful local neurology team that also works with an amazing therapy team that has learned to push her when she's trying to be feisty and get out of things. And they then partner with the therapy team from our clinic um, to really know how to help her advance her ret specific needs as well. And so that includes occupational therapy, physical therapy, and what is really the most delight for Kerrigan is her augmentative communication. What else do you have to say? I don't like that. Oh, no. And so that was one of the tools that we helped bring to her, and, um, and she's definitely taking off with it quite quickly. What happens is that she stops speaking with her mouth, but she starts speaking with her eyes. And so she takes advantage of what we call this very strong eye gaze um, to really communicate well. You can do it. What do you call a crate of ducks? A box of quackers. Ah, that's, <laughs> that's, really, that's a cute one. The team here is like our family. They know all about us. They know not just Kerrigan, they know me, my husband, um, our other daughter Shay. Um, it's, it's just truly a remarkable experience whenever we come in. <laughs> so it truly has become our second home. We try to jam pack our trips to have a lot of fun in the midst of having, you know, appointments, but we got to make some fun out of it. Go Kerrigan! This is something Kerrigan has, it doesn't define her. So she's in cheer, she's playing basketball, she's played baseball, all different, you know, normal four-year-old events and things that she can do. We put her in, she might need a little bit of extra assistance, but she enjoys it just like a normal four-year-old. And our team here and in Baton Rouge are behind us a thousand percent on that. Her family is a huge part of her team. They are such wonderful, strong advocates, and they really help her engage in the community. And so that really helps her to participate in things that some people would think she couldn't. But it's not about finding what you can't do, it's about finding what you can. Yeah.